it's indeed my pleasure to connect with you all to share some of uh, the insights on customized nutrition care in hospitalized patients. So it's taken 25 years for me to, you know, come to this level. So I'm going to share my experience in my journey in the hospital. So when we talk about uh, hospitalized patients, as a dietitian, the first thing comes into my mind is malnutrition. So the skeleton in the hospital closet was one of the first paper to be published in the year 1974 by ba Butterworth. He had, uh, you know, quoted saying that the uh, uh, role of nutrition in the recovery of the disease is so important. But how much of importance has that been given in this setting? You know, still, you know, doctors do not have a major curriculum of nutrition in their, uh, you know, MBBS, right? So understanding nutrition as a team, doctors, dietitians, nurses together makes a big difference, especially when we talk about hospital malnutrition. And do you know, every 60 seconds, 11 hospitalized patients go undiagnosed with malnutrition. How well are we screening them? How well are we assessing them? Malnutrition predicts a lengthy and costly hospital stay. And one in uh, three Indians who get admitted to hospital are malnourished. And one in three hospitalized patients become malnourished when during their stay in the hospital. That is a global data. And why we speak about malnutrition is because malnourished patients have a tendency to stay longer in the hospital, two to three days longer compared to a healthy counterpart. This is a global data and two to three days of hospital stay is going to cost them. And why are we talking so much about malnutrition in hospital? That's because it increases hospital length of stay. It increases medical cost and mortality also. So when we talk about hospital malnutrition, it is about 20 to 60% of Indian hospitalized patients are malnourished. And malnutrition by itself is a major contributor to increased morbidity and mortality up to two to 10 times more likely to die of infectious complications and decreased function and quality of life, increased length of stay, and readmission rate is about three times higher. So that is why as a dietitian, I always love to talk about hospital malnutrition and ways and means of handling it. And when we look at uh, etiology-based uh, malnutrition definition, so nutrition risk can be identified by understanding their intake and loss of uh, body mass and looking at their inflammatory status whether they have inflammation or not makes a difference. If there is no inflammation, it is starvation-related malnutrition. And if it is, yes, mild to moderate, it is chronic disease-related malnutrition. Say, for example, an organ failure, pancreatic cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, sarcopenic obesity. And if it is an S with a marked uh, you know, inflammatory response, it is acute disease or injury-related malnutrition, major infection, burns, trauma, you know, all these uh, head injuries, uh, all these uh, come under that category. So critically ill patients are at increased risk of malnutrition due to the inflammation and altered metabolism that they undergo. How do we help them? Malnutrition in hospital is not something surprising, but it can be prevented with all ways and means uh, as a team if we work together. And this is an algorithm from JCI Joint Commission International, wherein early assessment or screening of patients on admission is a vital thing to understand whether the patient is at risk of malnutrition or not. If the patient is at risk of malnutrition, patient needs to be assessed by the dietitian, right? And if they are not, then periodically they have to be rescreened. And if in case they are assessed by the dietitian, then the you know, dietitian needs to understand their nutritional status and make a care plan accordingly 
implement the care plan and make sure it is monitored and ensure that there is some evidence of improvement. If there is improvement, obviously the uh, therapy can be terminated. If there is no improvement, it has to be continued till the goal is achieved. When we talk about nutrition care process, there are four components to it. It is very easy for us to speak about the four components, but implementing a nutrition care process in the hospital is a task. The first thing is nutrition assessment. Then from the components of assessment, you tend to diagnose. Nutritional diagnosis is done. Then with the diagnosis, you intervene, make a care plan for the patient and monitor their intake and evaluate the efficacy of therapy and finally terminate or continue the therapy.